friend i was talking about the orthodox systems in the previous hour now i will try to talk about the heterodox that is non orthodox systems of philosophy that developed in our country always there were people that wished to have free thoughts and therefore they insisted that first of all the authority of the vedas should be opposed the orthodox systems maintained that the vedas were the source for all knowledge and the other systems opposed it among them mainly we can name three systems one system was called the charvaka darshana charvaka was the name of one scholar some people try to explain it as charuvaka charu is charming vaka is speech one whose speech is very very interesting this charvaka system is also called the lokayata system lokayata means that which is spread all over the world we are all actually followers of charvaka in many senses we may be worshiping some gods we may go to temple but however in our daily lives we usually take for granted everything and we do not have any strong faith in the statements of the ancient seers or sages and therefore we all belong to that group called charvakas in one sense the charvaka system mainly said that perception is the only valid means of correct knowledge everything else like inference or verbal testimony they are never sure that they are right i can infer seeing some of these things it should be like that but that inference many a times goes wrong we on account of this type of effect there must be that reason like that we we think but there could be a hundred reasons for that result and so the inference that this should have been the cause goes haywire and so the charvaka accepts only direct perception as the valid means of knowledge inference etc are only guesses they may be right they may not be right that is is the stand and verbal testimony as we all know many people can speak many things they can say many things but what is the guarantee that they are speaking the truth they might have been themselves cheated they very strongly believe that but what is the guarantee that they had the correct knowledge of those things and therefore verbal testimony cannot be believed however great a person has said it vasistha might have said it vamadeva might have said it but there is no guarantee that it is true and therefore the charvaka accepts only what is visible what can be tested by direct perception 
otherwise it does not believe in the existence of anything else and therefore according to him the body is true but whether there is a soul in it an atman in it that is only a guesswork there is no proof for the existence of an atman in any body according to them and therefore he does not exist he does not accept what is generally called punar janma punar janma means being born again there is no proof to say that someone is after after his death he is born again have you if have any of you met a person who remembers his previous life you do not find such persons and therefore according to charvaka there is no reincarnation the life is accidental and the life is true only as long as a person lives after the death he becomes non existent there is no proof for existence after death according to charvaka system and he believes that in the world there are only four types of original elements of course it is not according to modern chemistry according to him prithvi ap tejo vayu prithvi is earth or mud this is one of the elements by which everything is made water up that is water tejas the fire and vayu the air only the air the well let's say let me these four are the elements that the charvaka system accepts then how is it you know even though there is a combination of water earth air and fire there is no consciousness we understand something we doubt something how is it possible that these things which are called jada which are in english we call it inert they are all inert and therefore how can this intelligence arise how is it possible that a person has doubts about this understanding about something and he is questioning how is this possible if only water air fire earth these are there how can such a new thing like intelligence come if intelligence did not exist there would be no conversation there would be no argument nothing would be possible how is it occurring that is the question and the charvaka answers that it is like various things combine and a new power comes just like you can take the example of molasses this ferment and then this whiskey etc these things uh, liquors are produced in the constituents that go into make that liquor there was no power of making somebody tipsy but afterwards when these things are combined in a particular way that new power comes to that there is the palm leaf there is uh, you all know what is called uh, um, vilya vilya the ele you know that you know that is green in color there is 
the beetle nut which is of a different color brown and we also have the lime and that is uh, added to it these three things are taken and then a new color red appears there and therefore the combination of these things can result in something that was not there earlier the power of intoxication that we get in the liquor it is not found in its constituents similarly on account of a particular type of combination this intelligence occurs in particular things that is what we call life other than this there is nothing else we have intelligence we have a uh, thoughts how is this possible his explanation is that in the brain of every human being there are millions of neurons and how they react to the external stimulus that is what is called intelligence and therefore there is no need of accepting something called mind or something called uh, intelligence all these things are naturally happening and therefore it is not necessary to accept some entity which is called atman when atman himself is not there how can we think of paramatman a god who has seen a god we have all visited temples and seen the idols of gods but real god in, in the cinemas in the movies many people act like gods but all that is only according to our imaginations there is no guarantee that a god will be in the form of a human being the other animals may not agree that the god is in the form of a man only only is the human beings that we have thought that these things are like that and therefore in the charvaka system which is heterodox there is against orthodoxy there is no place for any god this is what is called in western philosophy as materialistic philosophy materialistic means only materials are true apart from them non materialistic things like intelligence or god these things do not exist and everything that is told in the vedas about a place called swarga it is only the result of fertile imagination of the rishis who has seen this swarga everything talks about it we talk about the dancers in this swarga who are called ramba urvashi menaka etc but all that is only poets imagination there is no absolutely no proof for the existence of such things that is the conclusion of a charvaka and so according to him in this world it is better to enjoy this world as much as possible wasting time in the meditation of god or doing what is called tapas etc all these things are a waste there is no other world at all there is no possibility of going to when the other world does not exist what is the question of going it is not possible at all and therefore all these ideas like dharma punya papa etc 
these are mere imaginations they do not have any validity according to the charvaka system this is what is called nastika darshana nothing apart from what we see in this world nothing exists that is his conclusion if this philosophy is accepted then there will be no progress in this world at all why should scientists work so hard uh, for uh, helping the people you know in finding new medicines etc everyone wishes to be as happy as possible there is no need of straining there is no need of working hard so this charvaka philosophy is not socially acceptable if no one accepts what is called dharma that this is right this is wrong then human beings will also live like wild animals it is right there is no question of any moral in the life of a charvaka and therefore this charvaka system was not accepted by anybody all the people all the great scholars have refuted the judgments of these charvakas we do not have any textbook written by the followers of charvakas in ancient india what we know about the principles of charvaka we all know only from the condemnations the books of others the charva in the books of all schools the charvaka is condemned it is said that he is there only to mislead the people and all his teachings are worthless that is the conclusion of others even for this charvaka in some books we have the quotations of some sutras these sutras are said to have been written by a person called brihaspati brihaspati wrote the sutras for the charvaka system it is believed but any book that claims to tell about the charvaka independently independently written by charvakas is not available only its condemnations are there even in the ramayana valmiki ramayana we have reference to this charvaka system which is called lokayata as i already said when rama was in the forest and bharata came to take him back to ayodhya rama did not accept it my father's words are sacrosanct and therefore i cannot break his words that was the stand of rama at that time one of the rishis called jabali he started arguing that so on so on so is my father so on so is my mother and therefore i have to follow his advice all this is nonsense every person should be free to enjoy this world as much as possible and therefore rama don't care for what your father promised to one of your mothers that is kaikeyi you simply come back to ayodhya and live happily ruling the kingdom there is no use of spending 14 years in the forest it is all nonsense like that this jabali tries to convince rama to come back to ayodhya and so this charvaka system is very very old there is no doubt about it 
but here all the other systems refuted these ideas of charvaka the charvaka asks many people are performing shraddha that is for the dead persons every year on that day the sons perform the shraddha what is the use of it if you feed some brahmins here how can that food reach the dead man he is already gone so it is only a waste of time like that he argues the charvaka argues if it were possible to send this food by mantras to a person then if a person is living upstairs then perform all these things with mantras will he be satisfied these questions he asks therefore this is all against the tradition of the people and so charvaka system was condemned by one and all many scholars condemned it next comes the anartha uh, unorthodox or heterodox system that is called buddhism many people may become angry when i say that this is a heterodox system but with all respect to gautama gautama buddha i am only stating the fact that the systems that do not accept the authority of the vedas are called nastika systems and therefore i am saying it i am not against buddhism buddhism has many many virtues and uh, there are so many different uh, countries that are following buddhism i have visited uh, thailand a number of times there all the people are buddhists and uh, the buddhist way of life is very good there is no doubt at all but that is a different matter what we are now saying is that buddhism belongs to the group called unorthodox or heterodox systems it is called heterodox because it does not accept the authority of the vedas and then the main point in buddhism is that it accepts perception as a means of knowledge the second thing is it accepts inference also as a mean of means of knowledge it accepts pratyaksha and anumana these two but it does not accept what is called the third one the authority of the vedas etc and the buddhists said that is the, you know the life of the buddha he was born in kapilavastu or in a place called lumbini and then he was brought up in a very nice manner so that his mind would not go towards sanyasa by his father shuddhodana but his mind was thinking about it and you can never stop a person from going to these kinds of thoughts and therefore he decided that this world is full of pain that is visible to everyone whether one is rich or poor this is common we see because our near ones and dear ones die we lose many things and therefore this is dukkha that is acceptable and to find an answer to this problem of dukkha gautama left his palace he had a beautiful life he had a beautiful wife he had a beautiful son everything was there as a prince he could have spent his time very very happily but he wanted to find a solution for the problem of dukkha of all the people and therefore he left all his life and he went to the forest to perform austerities and penance so that he will have a great 
And that is what is called Bodhi. Since he got Bodhi, he was named Buddha. That special light that came to him. Aham Buddha, now I know everything. I know the reason for Dukkha. I know the means to eradicate this Dukkha. That was his conclusion. And so this Buddhism, the texts of Buddhism are called Tripitaka. Many of you might have heard about it. What is the meaning of the word Pitaka? Pitaka means a basket. Three baskets, three Pitaka. That is, these main tenets of Buddhism were collected and put into three texts. One was called Sutta Pitaka, another one was called Vinaya Pitaka, the third one was called Abhidhamma Pitaka. All the thoughts, all the conversations, all the stories told by Buddha, these are all collected in the Tripitakas. In the Tripitakas, his main point is Sarvam Dukkham Dukkham. Sarvam Swalakshanam Swalakshanam. Sarvam Kshenikam Kshenikam. Everything in this world is full of Dukkha, full of pain. Everything is Kshenika, momentary. There is nothing that is permanent in this world. Sarvam Swalakshanam Swalakshanam. Everything is individualistic. Everything is separate like that. So, since he, since Buddha maintained that Sarvam Kshenikam Kshenikam, there is no possibility of accepting one permanent or eternal Atman. It is called Nairatmya Darshana. As long as you have the feeling that I have an Atman which is permanent, for its sake you try to do many things which are not good to the world. My Atman is permanent. For its sake I am going to perform this great sacrifice called Ashwamedha and therefore I fight with other kings to prove my sovereignty. I am the sovereign of everything, all the world. That has to be proved in Ashwamedha. And therefore, it leads to so much of violence, so much of himsa. And so, Buddha does not accept the existence of a permanent Atman. There is no permanent Atman. And Buddha also does not accept the existence of a Paramatman, any God, etc. He does not accept. Only thing is, it is true that we are in this life and in this life there is so much of Dukkha. And so we have to find a way to avoid this Dukkha. That is only on account of nirvana. Nirvana is, see, a lamp is burning. When a lamp, all the oil has been used. There is no further oil. At that time, what happens? It extinguishes. The fire in the lamp is extinguished. Like that, in our life also, on account of extinguishing all these karmans, we have to get rid of this. On account of that, we are, he accepts uh, punarjanma. Buddha accepts punarjanma even though he does not accept a permanent Atman. According to him, what you call Atman is a series of sensations. And that series of sensations continues. And therefore, all this trouble is there. 
to get rid of it he accepted sanyasa this type of life he talks about for arya satyas ashtanga marga etc and according to that it is possible to gain nirvana and that nirvana is the solution for all these problems like that he had concluded as you all know at the time of the buddha he used the language called prakrit the prakrita language he called and that is now named as pali one type of prakrit is called pali and all the sacred texts of the buddhism are in the language known as pali tripitakas all of them are in pali and that is studied even now in ceylon by some scholars and much later grew in that uh, language also uh, there are scholars even now just as i have studied sanskrit like that there are people who have studied pali in order to understand all the literature of the buddhists afterwards see in uh, buddhism also different sections grew up one is called theravada hinayana mahayana etc in the mahayana period the buddhists used sanskrit for writing the books there were many mahayanis who were very great scholars who were very great logicians their logic is very very strong buddhist logic is very very strong they have hundreds of books about that and they were so influential that these books were translated into languages like tibetan chinese etc scholars were invited even in the 11th century ad the emperor of china had arranged a great translation bureau in china for that purpose scholars from india were going to china and there they have translated many works into chinese similar was the case with tibet and therefore many books of the buddhist uh, buddhist philosophy are not found in sanskrit they are found in tibetan and chinese originally they were written in sanskrit only the translations have remained the original sanskrit books are lost if you look at the history of indian philosophy we see many of the books of the buddhists have been lost probably it is on account of the vidharmiyas vidharmi is follow entering into india and burning the libraries so many books were lost so they are now available only in chinese and tibetan verses so this dharma grew up in many ways and very great books of logic were uh, written so this is cool since it opposes the vedic authority it is also called heterodox and philosophically speaking there are 
different schools of Buddhism. One school is called Shunyavadins. Another school is called Vaibhashikas. Sautrantikas is another school. Vijnanavadins is another school like that. These subjects require a lot of time to explain. We do not have so much of time now, but you can refer to the books and understand them. Vijnanavadins say that everything is Vijnana, that the outer world, the external world does not have an independent existence. It is all the projection of the human mind, like that it is said in the Vijnana Vadins. So, it is a very big subject. The Buddhist study of the Buddhist text takes years together. This was also one school. So, the first school is called the Charvaka school, Charvaka Darshana. The second school is called Buddhist school, that is Bauddha Darshana. And then another most important school that we have to deal with is Jainism. Jaina thoughts, see Jainas, now, nowadays we say that uh, Vardhamana Mahavira who was a contemporary of Gautama Buddha is responsible for the Jaina Mata now. But according to Jains, that Vardhamana Mahavira was the 24th Tirthankara, the 24th great teacher. And so before him, there were 23 other Tirthankaras. So Jainism has a very, very long history. It is a very ancient system. We have to accept it. And in this system, they have a firm belief in a permanent Atman. Jains accept the existence of this Atman as a permanent entity. It cannot be destroyed by anybody. It may be in trouble, it may be in samsara, it may rise to the level of gods, it may rise to the level of Tirthankaras, all these things are possible. But it is not possible that this Atman is any time created or any time destroyed. Atma Nityaha. Atma is a permanent entity. And according to them, there are infinite number of Atmans. How many Atmans are there? You cannot count. It is Ananta, endless. Such a great number they are there. And according to them, there is no God. They have accepted gods. They accept Indra, Manmata, etc., Saraswati, all these gods they accept. But a god with a capital G, the god who created the world, or a god who is responsible for the structure. Such a god is not accepted by Jains. All the Jain temples or Basadis as they are called, they are the places of the different Tirthankaras. We have the Basadis of Parshvanatha, we have the Parsh Basadis of Adinatha, we have the Basadis of Vardhamana, like that. But not a god who created this world 
or who can destroy this world. Such a God is not accepted by Jain philosophers. So, according to them, this permanent Atman in every person, he has many different lives. Punar Janma is accepted. This Atman is going through this series of births and deaths. In all the stories written by Jains, there is a lot of literature written by the Jains. You all know many kingdoms were ruled by the Jains. In Karnataka itself, the Rashtrakuta Empire. You all know which is the first text of Kannada, the earliest text that is available in Kannada. That is called Kaviraja Marga. That was written by Sri Vijaya, who was patronized by the king Nripatunga Amoghavarsha. So, Jainism was the dominant religion of the people, not only in Karnataka, but in many parts of India, especially in Gujarat. In Gujarat, Jainism was... Uh, some, some sounds I heard, I do not understand it. Uh, so, Jainism was one of the most important darshanas of this country. We have many, many great authors in Jainism. In Karnataka itself, a great poet called Jinasena, a Sanskrit poet, he was here and he has given wonderful description of the Jain philosophy in his Mahapurana, Adi Purana. And in Kannada also, who is the first poet of Kannada, Adi Kavi in Kannada, he is called Pampa, Adi Pampa. And that Pampa, his more, more uh, famous work is Vikramarjuna Vijaya, about the story of the Mahabharata. But he has also written Adi Purana. Adi Purana means the Purana that describes the life of Adinatha, the first Tirthankara. Only in that, we also find the story of Gomateshwara, who is called Bahubali, and his brother Bharata. Their stories are described in the Adi Purana. So in Kannada, in Gujarati, in Sanskrit, in Prakrit, in all these languages, the Jaina literature has grown by leaps and bounds. So much of literature has been produced in these languages by the Jainas. And the Jain philosophy is also very, very interesting. The Jains accept three pramanas. Prateksha pramana, that is perception. Anumana pramana, that is inference. And thirdly, Agama. They have their own sacred literature, which are the words of uh, uh, Vardhavana Mahavira, etc. And so, for them, they, they have given the authority. 
So this verbal testimony is also accepted by the Jainas. According to them, there is a Swarga, there is a Naraka. Even though we do not see it, you know, according to Charvaka, if we do not see it, it does, it does not exist. But the Jainas accept the existence of Swarga and Naraka and all these result from our karmans. According to our karma, we may go to the Swarga or we may go to the Naraka. The... Uh, sir. Hello. Hello. Ah, sir, Adrali, ye Charvaka Siddhanta Dali one Mat Bharata, and then many we held Tidala the Purukwagi Hell Bada, sir. Oh, yeah, Nedi. Andre, our elder, Vidya and Nuru, Sarva Darshana Sangra Hadali, Charvaka Darshana on a Kurtu Matadi Dare, Adrali, e Tatva Siddhanta Gana Hero on the Timali, Santoshane, Juno the Bahumukya Guri, either Nantra Bere in on the Aude Prapanchaila, Swarga, Naraka, Hutu, Savu, Yella, Brahma in the Kudita Kantavundu, Adarsha and Tili Elder. New Yava Darshina on a follow Marti, the other Praka will the yellow Darshina Gulukuda in the Niraka Sile Charvaka Darshin the Lee, Hail Ruth, the Niraka Sile. Other Vidya and Niro, the head of Allah, other Tapu, other Tapu, Vidya and Nero Bardi Rod Allah, Yavu Sarva Darshina Sangraham Bodhi, Vidya and Nerege, Sanyasa the Kolo the Kinta Modulu, it is through Madhavanta. A Madhavambur Tamman Hesru Sayananta. A Sayanar Obu Magani Gu Madhavan Tesaritu. A Sayana Madhavan, the Sayana Vidyaranera Tamma Sayana Maga Madhavaitala. Avunu Burdidu Sarva Darshana Sangra. A Sarva Darshana Sangra Hadali Modalane Darshana Charvaka. Yeradane Darshana Bauddha. Murne Darshana Jaina Nalkane do Purna Pragna Darshana Andre Madhvachari Reda Takanta Dvaita Darshana Amele Ramanuja Darshana Amel Nana Vidhuagirta Kanta Shaiva Darshana Guru Adad Mele Sankhya Darshana Hedidare Amel Mimamsa Darshana Hedidare Konega Advaita Darshana Hedidare Ado Apustakana Takanta Stiti Adrilli Hedipraka Nana Hedidala Madhu Charvakana Darshan the Leno Tundre, E. Propanche the Linavo Sukhavana is to unbos podo, as to unbos beko. E. Dalla de Inillo Sorgadella Ananda Arbos TV, Vaikun Togi, Kushe Griti and Bodella, Kevala Kalpane, Adunijava La, and the head road Nija. Ado Sativedo, Erta Kandavisha. They are all in non their Tarkagana held Teresa. Andre Sharira in the late Chaitanya Untagate, Anna Panagalinda, Chaitanya Hechagate, Ilde Drek Shin Sute, Adrinda, I Puja Gulu Mate Veda Gulge, Oderiti Agirta Kantarta, Ila Nonta, Vandu Tatwana Eltere, Alde, Shrada Madwanta Taimali, Shrada now, Kotanta Aharbul is a Tilput de no Hagidre, Hagidre, Mane Melita Kantor game, upstairs the Lerotorge, Ilinda Madi or Uta or Hotetumbutan. How on the Pristino could a Keltan. Mate Aun Heltane, Nius Egnigal in the Madodrinda, Egnigal on the Pushuana Kultiri. A Pushuan Takanta do Adena to Sorgo Kogu Tempo Jag Hagidre Nim Tandena Ariti Kuli or Sorgo Kogli Yakari Andrea Wataria is sir, protect Shivagina Vien Mada Korti, Ade Pramana, another Wadanta. Our protection Pramana will be to bear our Pramana Podila. Charvaka. Other than Sarah, Sarah, Kone Mato, 
ಈಗ ವೇದ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ವೇದ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ಗಳನ್ನ ನಾವು ಓದಿದೀವಲ್ಲ ಸರ್ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ಗಾರ್ಗಿ ಮೈತ್ರೇಯಿ ಅಪಾಲ ಮತ್ತೆ ಲೋಪಮುದ್ರ ಈ ರೀತಿ ಹೆಣ್ಮಕ್ಳು ಶಿಕ್ಷಣಕ್ಕೂ ಕೂಡ ಒತ್ತನ್ನ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿದ್ರು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ನಾವು ಓದ್ಕೊಂಡಿದೀವಿ ಬಟ್ ಸ್ತ್ರೀ ಶಿಕ್ಷಣದ ಕುರಿತು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಎಲ್ಲಿ ಚರ್ಚೆಗಳು ಕಂಡು ಬಂದಂಗ ಅನ್ಸಲ್ಲ ನನ್ಗೆ ಅಲ್ಲ ಎಲ್ಲಿ ನೀವು ಚರ್ಚೆ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಇವತ್ತು ನಾನು ತೆಗೆದುಕೊಂಡಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥ ವಿಷಯ ಅದಲ್ವ ಅಲ್ಲ ಇವತ್ತು ಅಲ್ಲ ಅಲ್ಲ ನಾನು ಇದನ್ನ ಪೂರ್ವಕವಾಗಿ ನೀವು ಹೇಳ್ತಿದ್ರಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ತಿಳ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಅಂತ ಕೇಳಿದೆ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಅದು ಅದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ಕೇಳೋ ಹಾಗಿದ್ರೆ ನೋಡಿ ಒಂದು ವಿಷಯ ಏನು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ವೇದದಲ್ಲಿ ಅನೇಕ ಋಷಿಗಳು ಸ್ತ್ರೀ ಋಷಿಗಳು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಕೇವಲ ವೇದ ಅಧ್ಯಯನ ಮಾಡೋದಲ್ಲ ವೇದದಲ್ಲಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಎಷ್ಟೋ ಸೂಕ್ತಗಳನ್ನ ರಚನೆ ಮಾಡಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥವರೇ ಸ್ತ್ರೀಯರು ಸ್ತ್ರೀಯರಿಗೆ ವೇದದ ಅಧ್ಯಯನ ಅವಕಾಶ ಮಾತ್ರ ಅಲ್ಲ ಆ ವೇದದ ಮಂತ್ರಗಳನ್ನ ಅವರು ಸೃಷ್ಟಿ ಮಾಡಿರೋರೇ ಎಷ್ಟೋ ಸ್ತ್ರೀಯರು ಅಂಥ ಸೂಕ್ತಗಳೇ ಬೇಕಾದಷ್ಟಿದೆ ಅದೇ ಇರುವಂಥದ್ದೇ ಆದ್ದರಿಂದ ಮತ್ತು ಉಪನಿಷತ್ತುಗಳು ನೀವು ಹೇಳಿದಂಥ ಗಾರ್ಗಿ ಇವರ ಹೆಸರು ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಆ ಗಾರ್ಗಿ ಅವರೆಲ್ಲರೂ ಕೂಡ ಬರತಕ್ಕಂಥದ್ದು ಉಪನಿಷತ್ತುಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ತುಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಬರುವಂಥ ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾಜ್ಞವಲ್ಕ್ಯ ಅಂತ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಒಬ್ಬ ಋಷಿ ಇರ್ತಾನೆ ಆ ಯಾಜ್ಞವಲ್ಕ್ಯನು ಜನಕನ ಆಸ್ಥಾನಕ್ಕೆ ಹೋಗ್ತಾನೆ ಆ ಜನಕನ ಆಸ್ಥಾನಕ್ಕೆ ಹೋದಾಗ ನೂರಾರು ಸಾವಿರಾರು ಹಸುಗಳಿರುತ್ತೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾರು ನಿಜವಾಗಿ ಆತ್ಮದರ್ಶನ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದಾರೆ ತಿಳ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅಂಥವರು ಈ ಹಸುಗಳನ್ನು ಹೊಡೆದುಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗ್ಬೋದು ಅಂತ ರಾಜ ಜನಕ ಹೇಳ್ತಾನೆ ಆಗ ಈ ಯಾಜ್ಞವಲ್ಕಿಯರು ತಮ್ಮ ಶಿಷ್ಯನಿಗೆ ನೀನು ಇವನ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ನಮ್ಮ ಆಶ್ರಮಕ್ಕೆ ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಅವರನ್ನ ಚಾಲೆಂಜ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಮಾಡಿದಂಥವಳು ಗಾರ್ಗಿ ವಾಚಕ್ನವಿ ಅಂತ ಹೆಸರವಳು ಗಾರ್ಗಿ ವಾಚಕ್ನವಿ ಅವಳು ಯಾಜ್ಞವಲ್ಕಿಯರನ್ನೇ ದೊಡ್ಡದಾಗಿ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಾಳೆ ಅಂತ ಇದೆ ಅದಲ್ಲವೂ ಕೂಡ ಸ್ತ್ರೀಯರು ಕೂಡ ವಿದ್ಯಾಭ್ಯಾಸವನ್ನು ಪಡಿತಾ ಇದ್ರು ಆತ್ಮಜ್ಞಾನಿಗಳಾಗಿದ್ದರು ಮಂತ್ರ ಕರ್ತರಾಗಿದ್ದರು ಎಂಬುದನ್ನು ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಕಾಣ್ತೀವಿ ಅದು ಆದರೆ ಇವತ್ತು ನಾನು ತೆಗೆದುಕೊಂಡಿರತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಡೇಬ್ ಬೇರೆ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಅದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ನಾನು ಆ ವಿಷಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾತಾಡೋಕ್ಕೆ ಹೋಗಲಿಲ್ಲ ಈಗ ನಾನು ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇರತಕ್ಕಂಥದ್ದು ಜೈನ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾವ ರೀತಿ ಇದೆ ಎಂಬುದು ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀನಿ ಜೈನ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ನವರು ಜಗತ್ತನ್ನು ಒಪ್ಕೊಳ್ತಾರೆ ಜಗತ್ತು ಅಂಬುದು ಈ ಪ್ರಪಂಚ ಅಂಬುದು ಸ್ಥಿರವಾಗಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಪ್ರಪಂಚ ಇದನ್ನು ಯಾವ ದೇವರು ಸೃಷ್ಟಿಸಲಿಲ್ಲ ಯಾವ ದೇವರು ಇದಕ್ಕೆ ಪ್ರಳಯ ಮಾಡೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಸ್ವಾಭಾವಿಕವಾಗಿ ನಡೆಯುವಂಥ ಘಟನೆಗಳು ನಡೆಯುತ್ತೆ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಆದ್ದರಿಂದ ಒಬ್ಬ ದೇವರು ಎಂಬುದನ್ನ ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕಾದ ಅವಶ್ಯಕತೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ಮನುಷ್ಯನು ತನ್ನ ಜ್ಞಾನದಿಂದ ಸರ್ವಜ್ಞನಾಗಬಹುದು ತೀರ್ಥಂಕರನಾಗಬಹುದು ಇದನ್ನು ಜೈನರು ಒಪ್ತಾರೆ ಯಾವ ಮನುಷ್ಯ ಬೇಕಾದರೂ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಬೇಕಾಗಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಮುಖ್ಯವಾದ ತತ್ವ ಅವರು ಹೇಳುವಂಥದ್ದು ಅಹಿಂಸೆ ಏನು ಏನು ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಕೇಳಿಸ್ಲಿಲ್ಲ ಅವರ ಪ್ರಕಾರವಾಗಿ ಜೈನರ ಪ್ರಕಾರವಾಗಿ ಅಹಿಂಸಾ ಪರಮೋ ಧರ್ಮ ಅಹಿಂಸೆ ಎಂಬುದಕ್ಕೆ ಅಷ್ಟೊಂದು ಪ್ರಾಶಸ್ತ್ಯವನ್ನು ಕೊಟ್ಟರು ಅಹಿಂಸೆಯೇ ಎಲ್ಲದಕ್ಕಿಂತ ದೊಡ್ಡ ಧರ್ಮ ಆ ರೀತಿಯಾಗಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಅಹಿಂಸೆ ಎಂಬುವಂಥ ಧರ್ಮವನ್ನು ಅನುಸರಿಸುವುದರಿಂದ ಮನುಷ್ಯನು ವೀತರಾಗನಾಗಬೇಕು ರಾಗ ಅಂತಿದೆಯಲ್ಲ ರಾಗ ಅಂದರೆ ಸಂಗೀತದಲ್ಲಿ ಹೇಳುವಂಥ ರಾಗ ಅಲ್ಲ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಶಂಕರಾಭರಣ ಹಿಂದೋಳ ಇದೆಲ್ಲ ರಾಗಗಳು ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಆ ರಾಗದ ವಿಷಯದಲ್ಲಿ ನಾನು ಮಾತಾಡ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ವಸ್ತುಗಳನ್ನು ಕುರಿತು ನಮಗೆ ಹುಟ್ಟುವಂಥ ಆಸೆ ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ನಮ್ಮನ್ನು ಆಕರ್ಷಿಸುವಂಥದ್ದು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ರಾಗ ಅಂತ ಹೆಸರು ಈ ರಾಗ ದ್ವೇಷ ಈ ಎರಡರಿಂದಲೇ ಮನುಷ್ಯನಿಗೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ತೊಂದರೆ ಬಂದಿರೋದು ಈ ರಾಗವನ್ನು ದ್ವೇಷವನ್ನು ಸಂಪೂರ್ಣವಾಗಿ ತ್ಯಜಿಸಬೇಕು
ಬಹಳ ಒಳ್ಳೆಯದಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ನಾವು ಅನೇಕ ಗ್ರಂಥಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಏನು ಕಾಣ್ತೀವಿ ಅಂತಂದರೆ ರಾಮಾಯಣ ಮಹಾಭಾರತಾದಿಗಳಲ್ಲೂ ಕೂಡ ಆ ಕಾಲದಲ್ಲಿ ಎಲ್ಲ ಜನರು ಮಾಂಸಾಹಾರವನ್ನು ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರು ಅಂತ ನಾವು ಕಾಣ್ತೀವಿ ಮನುಷ್ಯ ಪ್ರಾಣಿಗಳ ಲೆವೆಲ್ನಲ್ಲಿದ್ದು ಆಮೇಲೆ ತನ್ನ ನಾಗರಿಕತೆಯನ್ನು ಬೆಳೆಸ್ಕೊಂಡ ಇದು ನಿಮ್ಮೆಲ್ರಿಗೂ ಗೊತ್ತು ಅಂತ ಕಾಣುತ್ತೆ ಯು ಆಲ್ ನೋ ದಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಅನ್ ಅನಿಮಲ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಅನಿಮಲ್ಸ್ ಹಂಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಈಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಫುಡ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಎ ಹಂಟರ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಈಟಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಫ್ಲೆಶ್ ಆಫ್ so many different animals only after his intellect developed he started agriculture and therefore there was plenty of food available and then on account of the influence of the great teachers of jainism this non violence or ahimsa came to the fore and on account of that vegetarianism developed in this country many of us are vegetarians today i think it is on account of the influence of the thoughts of jain seers idu prapanchakke bahala doddadaadanta ondu paatha this is a great lesson for the world see we are indulging in various kinds of himsas in this world unnecessarily many of you many of uh, women they may be wearing silk sarees but in order to produce one silk saree how many worms are killed silk worms even when they are alive they are put into boiling water and they are killed in that way only thus silk is produced all this is unnecessary violence it is possible for the human beings to live without committing such sins therefore the jains teach that all kind of himsa should be stopped every living being has a right to live in this world not only human beings what we are doing is we are encroaching upon the lands of various different animals see forests are become decreasing in size every day and therefore the animals do not have a place to live you have all heard or you might have read in the newspapers that leopards are coming into cities there are conflicts between human beings and wild animals elephants have killed such person like that the news we are reading it is all because of the craving of the human beings for their pleasure all this is unnecessary the earth is able to produce enough food to all beings now see in america in many western countries etc cows are bred only for the sake of beef only to eat beef they are doing it and they are feeding these cows with lots of corn lots of wheat in order to produce 1 pound of beef they are spending about 10 pounds of food grains if this is stopped 
there is no need for any human being to be hungry. Everyone can have enough food. And therefore, according to Jainism, the himsa should be totally avoided. And living a life of ahimsa, it is possible to gain the real knowledge of the world. And with that knowledge, one can become Sarvajna. It is also possible to end this cycle of birth and death. For this purpose, the Jains have produced a lot of literature. I was talking about Pampa, the first poet of Kannada. You all know that Pampa was patronized by a king called Arikesari. And in the Arikesari's court, there was a Sanskrit poet called Somadeva. See, in our own Karnataka, this Sanskrit poet was there in the 10th century. And that Somadeva has written Yashastilaka Champu. A very learned author was he. One is surprised at his mastery on Sanskrit. And he writes about the story of Yashodhara, King Yashodhara. And he tells about all the tenets of Jainism, all the teachings of the Tirthankaras. So, there were so many heterodox systems according to Tripitakas of the Buddhists. At the time of the Buddha, there were so many different philosophers they were coming to the Buddha and each one had his own philosophy and they were all rejecting the ideas of the Vedas. So they were called heterodox. Many of those sects have disappeared. Only the important ones like Buddhists, Jains, so they have remained in this world, and as you know, Buddhism has spread all over the world in many countries. See, even in Japan, there is Zen Buddhism, in China, there was Buddhism. Of course, now there is communism, and so religion is not very important for those people. In Ceylon, we have Buddhists. In Thailand, we have Buddhists. So, this has become a world religion in one sense. So, these were the different schools of uh, heterodox thinkers, those that came out of uh, the Vedic uh, systems and establish no, you see you have to unmute you know otherwise i am disturbed by you. so friends now i am uh, Giving a conclusion to my speech. And if uh, anyone wants any clarifications or if you have any questions, now is the time for you to ask the questions. About 10 minutes are remaining. You can use it for expressing your views. <laughs> I'm going to speak to you. I'm going to speak to you. I'm going to speak to you.
ನಿಮ್ಮ ತಮ್ಮ ಆರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈಸೂರಲ್ಲೂ ಓದ್ತಿದ್ದೋ ಮತ್ತೆ ಮೈಸೂರಲ್ಲೂ ಕೂಡ ಕೇಳ್ತಿದ್ದು ಹಾಗೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಭಾರತೀಯ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತಿದ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಮತ್ತೆ ಆಗ್ಲಿ ಸಂತೋಷ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಇದ್ರೆ ಕೇಳಿ ಮುಖ್ಯವಾಗಿ ಸರ್ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರ್ ಹೇಳಿ ಸರ್ ನಾವು ಬೆಳಗ್ಗೆಯಿಂದ ಎರಡು ಸೆಷನ್ ಕೇಳದ್ವಲ್ಲ ಈಗ ವೇದ ಪುರಾಣದ ಬಗ್ಗೆನು ನೀವ್ ಹೇಳಿದಾಗ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಮಗೆ ಅಷ್ಟು ಡೆಪ್ತ್ ಇದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಇದೆಲ್ಲ ಇಲ್ಲ ಸರ್ ಆದ್ರೆ ನನಗೆ ಈಗ ಅರ್ಥ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಂಡಿರೋದ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ನಾ ಕೇಳ್ತೇನೆ ವೇದ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಕೇಳಿದಾಗ್ಲು ಅದನ್ನು ಒಪ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋ ಹಂಗಾಗತ್ತೆ ಈಗ ಚಾರ್ವಾಕದ ಹೇಳದಾಗ್ಲೂ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಒಂದ್ ಕಡೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಆಗಿ ಯೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡಿದಾಗ ಒಂಥರ ಮನಸ್ಸು ಕಸವಿಸಿ ಆಗ್ತದೆ ಸರ್ ಯಾವುದನ್ನ ಒಪ್ಕೊಳ್ಬೇಕು ನಮ್ ಜೀವನದಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವ್ ಏನ್ ಅಲ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ ಆಗಿ ಕಂಡ್ಕೋಬೇಕು ಅನ್ನೋದೇ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಅರ್ಥ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಈ ಒಂದ್ ಜಿಜ್ಞಾಸಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಜೀವನ ಕಳೆದ್ ಬಿಡ್ತೀವಿ ಏನೋ ಅನ್ನೋ ಒಂದು ಅನುಮಾನ ನನಗೆ ಹಾ ಅದ್ ಅದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ನೋಡಿ ಮುಖ್ಯವಾಗಿ ತಿಳ್ಕೊಳ್ಬೇಕಾಗಿರೋದು ಮನುಷ್ಯ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬಿನ್ ಎಂಡೋರ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಬ್ರೈನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಫಾರ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಐಡಿಯಾಸ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಲೀಡ್ ಅವರ್ ಲೈಫ್ಸ್ just like ordinary animals we have the higher ability and therefore we should be open to all kinds of ideas these ideas some of them are orthodox see i do not say that everybody should accept the conclusions of the vedas the at those times the great thinkers like rishis they had their ideas they are welcome in the upanishads we see all those things but there is freedom for everyone to think independently and therefore these different views are there some of the views appeal to us very strongly and please understand that every philosophy has a strong basis the jaina philosophy is so strong that when we read the books of samanta bhadra and you might have heard of hemachandra who was in gujarat in the 11th century he was called kali kala sarvagnya a sarvagnya an omniscient in the kali age like that among the buddhists there were very great thinkers like dharma kirti vasubandhu asanga these were all very great thinkers philosophers of the world class and therefore every philosophy has very strong grounds nothing is said without thought so what is good for our life we are not sheep that are driven by a person into a flock we are independent human beings and therefore in every field we have the ability to think so the ideas of every school should be absorbed and with a practical view of the world we should be wise enough to follow what is right what is in experience what is valid that we should understand and therefore you are all requested to read these books on indian philosophy dr s radha krishnan our previous president he has written history of indian philosophy and c d sharma has written critical survey of indian philosophy ranade and the great scholar all these have written in english and for those people that are interested in kannada there was one rakshipuram shrinivasa shastra shrinivasa 
Srinivas Shastri, Lakshmipuram, Lakshmipuram Srinivas Acharya, he has written Hindu Darshana Sara in Kannada. He has written many books in Sanskrit also. But in, if you are, you are interested in Kannada, really, uh, many people might not have studied Sanskrit. And so Hindu Darshana Sara, that gives a very good explanation of all these systems. And the Sarva Darshana Sangraha that was mentioned by one of uh, you, that has been translated into Kannada, that is also available. There, Sarva Darshana, 14 different schools of philosophy have been explained by Madhava, the son of Sayana, the brother of Madhava. And so, much literature is available. You can judge yourself which suits your own mental makeup. And so, as human beings, especially as educated persons, you are yourself teachers. And therefore, to have a correct path of life, the knowledge of these philosophies will be a certain help. And so, you are requested to study these things and come to a judgment yourselves. You yourself should come to a judgment which philosophy appeals you the most. And then you can choose. Sir. Uh, exactly, sir. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Sir, uh, I have asked one question. Please. I am Archana from Delhi. Sir, uh, my, question, my question is that uh, what is the difference between Samadhi, which is by, given by the Patanjali, and Nirvana, which is given by the Buddhism? Is, are they same or they are they different? And if it is the same, then Buddhism, why Buddhism is called the uh, Nastic Darshan? Hmm. See, according to Patanjali, the highest state available by yoga is called Kaivalya. Kevala means a completely independent, completely free soul. The soul completely free from the clutches of Prakriti becomes Kevala and that state is called Kaivalya. But according to Buddhism, this state of Nirvana is completely stopping the Atman. That is, the Atman is not existing. He is actually Kshanika every moment. There is only a series of thoughts that is continuing, which is called Atman. And so, it, nirvana, nirvana means actually extinguishing of a flame. That is the meaning of Nirvana. Vana comes from Vata, that is air. Suppose in a place there is air, and that air 